Hello, welcome to another episode of Wicked Easy Cooking. My name is Chef Colin Roach, and today it's all about bacon, specifically baked maple brown sugar candied bacon. Yum, yum, yum. Never had this, Whew, you're in for a treat. Now I'm gonna give you some tips um, on how to make this, and then some tips on how to serve it. I'll give you some options as soon as we get this made. So first thing you need is you need a pan. I like to use a rack in it as well because it elevates it off the bottom and allows the heat to circulate. But this is gonna be fatty and greasy. You've cooked bacon before, and now we're gonna to top it with brown sugar and maple syrup and spices, and it's all gonna drip down. So to prevent that scrubbing forever, when you're done, I'm gonna line it with aluminum foil. So take some aluminum foil, I like to go a little bit long on it, so it comes up on the edges there, it doesn't sneak down inside, and get on the bottom of that pan. So we'll put that in here so you can see this. I like to go up the sides as mentioned, and then I'm gonna put my rack inside of that, okay? So I have it hanging up over the side, which is perfect. Now, the bacon is going to be on this rack, and it's going to get maybe stick to it a little bit, but it's also it's going to be hard to clean this rack. So to help with that, use a little bit of cooking spray. And I actually like to do both sides. And also put that in there, give it a good coating. And over there, you'll, you'll be thankful later on, a little less scrubbing. Okay, now we want to put our bacon in there, and I suggest you get thick cut, thick slice. It's usually about 10, 8 to a pack. You want the thick, because if you use the regular bacon, it's too thin, it's brittle, it'll fall apart, especially when we start putting sugar and other ingredients on top of it. So get yourself some thick cut. can be expensive, but once in a while I find it as BOGO, you know, buy one, get one. So if that's the case, grab it and freeze it. And then when you're going to have a you know, party, you want to make this stuff, you're going to be using some, some hors d'oeuvres, you're looking for some desserts, which I'm going to share with you later, you could make a big batch of this and it freezes. You know, once I make the candied bacon, I layer it between parchment paper and I freeze it. And then you can pull out what you want. Or you could just leave it in the refrigerator, which will be fine for, you know, a week or so. So any type, I'm just using Smithfield, use any type you want. I don't get any, you know, advertising fee or anything for mentioning their brand. You could use Whatever's on sale, you know, whatever kind that you like. And, you know, there's flavors out there. There's peppered bacon. There's, you know, hickory, maple. So you find the one that you like. Okay, so we're going to open this up. And as you can see here, it's, you know, a lot thicker than regular bacon. So I'll peel this off. So you can see it's a lot thicker on here. And we're going to just lay this across. It will shrink up a little bit, but we don't want to overlap it because what will happen is well that sugar will glue it together and we'll have one big sheet of bacon so we want to leave a space between those but you can go right up and touch them you know touch the edges but leave some space so let's see how many we can get in here I don't think I'm going to get 10 when I made this before I usually get about eight and there's three keep peeling these off four yeah I'll probably get about eight because that's about half the pan nice meaty bacon here Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oops. Okay, and make some room for the eighth guy. Yeah, there was ten slices in here, ten and a half slices. Okay. And then we just kind of tuck it down, but I'm not concerned about it here because we're still going to flip it one more time. All right, so you can see on that rack. Okay, so now what we're going to do is you can put any different combination of spices and seasonings on it but one of the things I like to do is put maple syrup so if you just put the sugar on it brown sugar on it it can fall and it melts off but maple syrup kind of acts like the glue so I'm gonna paint a little kitchen brush here this maple syrup if you don't have a brush just use the back of a spoon just get it on the bacon and then we're gonna put the brown sugar and then we're gonna turn it and do the same thing on the other side but here's where you know, you get to customize it. And I'll put this in the recipe here too. You know, feel free to use cayenne pepper, black pepper, cumin. Some people could put nuts on there. If you're gonna use it for something sweet, use cinnamon, you know, use cocoa powder. That's great on there as well. 
I mean, for one of the things, my kids love this with their um, pancakes. You know, I make chocolate chip pancakes for them, and then I take the candied bacon and crumble it on top. Perfect. Breakfast made in heaven right there. But you can make BLTs with it. Awesome BLTs. You know, tomatoes, the lettuce, toasted bread, mayonnaise, and some candied bacon. But I'm going to show you a couple other ways. But I've seen it in ice cream. I've seen it in peanut butter cookies. I've seen it in muffins, cakes. So there's lots of use. You can just Google it and find out all the uses for it. But I love it just by itself. And I might have a cocktail party and I will just serve it by itself. You know, I'll just kind of make it into bite-sized pieces and put toothpicks in it or even put a jar of toothpicks in the middle of a tray and all the bacon around it and let the guests help themselves to it. That's perfect. You know, but I've also taken little pieces and put it in deviled eggs, you know, a little piece sticking off with a sprig of parsley, great garnish, and it adds flavor. So sky's the limit what you want to do with these things. And there's even some restaurants doing it. I'll show you a picture up here or here. This is what David Burke does in his restaurant with candied bacon. Great display, right? What a visual that is, and I bet it's super yummy as well. So think about what you want to do with your bacon. But first, let's get this maple syrup spread on it. So about a quarter of a cup, half a cup, third cup. And I'm using real maple syrup, but it's kind of expensive. So you could use the corn syrup based, you know, imitation maple syrup stuff. If you'd like the Aunt Jemima or Mrs. Buttersworth log cabin. But I'm using some real one that I got uh, my last trip to Maine. Bought it up there. So it's from New England. So you could use what you have. So make sure you paint it all around. Okay, all around the bacon. All right, then we're gonna take this brown sugar. I like to use my fingers, so I can control it, and I just kind of sprinkle it down the middle of the bacon. Because what'll happen is as the sugar melts, it's gonna spread out. So I kind of make a line right down the middle of the bacon. Yummy. Okay, and then we're gonna flip this over. But this is the point where you would get to add your spices. So what do you want to put? I'm going to put a little black pepper. I think that'll add to what I'm going to do with it. And I might even put a little cinnamon on it. Have a unique little flavor profile. All right, so there we go. Now I've got some tongs here. I'm just going to let me push this down a little bit. So I'm just mounds of sugar, and I'm just going to turn each one of these. So turn it over, tuck in the ends, turn it over, and tuck in the ends. Okay. Mm, this smells great. You smell that maple syrup on the bacon. It's not even cooked yet. Whew. It's going to be yummy. All right, now just give them some space here, tuck the ends in. All right, give it another paint. And then we'll hit it with the sugar, any spices we want, and in the oven. That's a 400 degrees preheated oven. Pop it in. It'll take about 30 minutes. But at the halfway point, 15, what I set my timer for, we're going to turn this bacon over. Okay, we're going to flip it over in the pan. And then we're going to cook it for approximately 15, but you got to be careful because, you know, there's sugar in here, there's fats, this will burn. You know, bacon burns by itself, no mind adding all this to it. So we have to be really careful. So you got to watch it. So after that first turn of 15 minutes, I start watching it. It could be done as soon as 20 minutes, you know, um, total. So another five minutes after the turn, or it could be 15. Again, depending on the size of your oven, if it's calibrated, all that. But it goes pretty quick. So let's put this in. And then I'll be back. Okay, it's been 15 minutes and this bacon is done. So we got to turn it and put it back in for another 15, probably max. So you can see it's already you know, looking great. So we're going to turn this over. You know, again, leaving that space. You can see how much it's shrunk up like bacon does. But it has that brown sugar and that maple syrup on it, which is what's going to candy it, especially as it comes out and then cools. So back in and then we'll look at it in 15 Okay, so we've got about five, ten more minutes on that bacon in there. I just checked it. So while we're waiting on that, I want to tell you some options, things you can use or, or utilize that bacon with. Now, I love it just plain. So a lot of times at 
cocktail parties, hors d'oeuvres. I would just cut it up into small pieces with, you know, a container of toothpicks in the middle and put the bacon around or even put the toothpicks in the bacon and just have people eat it just like that. They love it. If you've never had candied bacon, whew, mine's going to be blown. Awesome. But there's other ways too, because sometimes I'll make a big batch, it freezes well, or I can leave it in the refrigerator and I'll take it out. Like, you know, I've seen it put into muffins, I've seen it put into cookies, you know. My kids love it over pancakes, you know, chocolate chip pancakes, and then you crumble bacon on top of that. This candied bacon, what's better? Uh, a BLT, woo! If you ever had candied bacon with the lettuce and tomato and some mayonnaise, a nice piece of bread, awesome too. So there's lots of recipes out there you can just Google it. But a couple I'm just going to show you is I'm going to show you a savory and a sweet. Savory, I want to make an hors d'oeuvre, quick hors d'oeuvre that you can utilize this bacon with. And you don't even have to use this bacon, you can use any bacon. So this recipe would be good for that. Um, and I'll put the, I'll include that at the, at the end as well. So this is candied bacon and apple canapes. Right? It's a little thing with a little blue cheese mix in there. And the other one I'm going to make is the s'mores. S'mores with bacon. I'm actually going to make it a little fancy. Instead of graham crackers and Hershey's chocolate, which you could certainly do, I'm going to use it with uh, little like biscotti type cookies and some Nutella spread on there with the bacon and then the browned caramelized marshmallow. It's going to be great. So first, while waiting on that, um, I'm going to show you the canapé. And again, I'll include this recipe in here for you. So you need some kind of bread. So you could use just regular sandwich bread. Try to get the thin one if you can. You know, it's a little less thick. And then you can even make, if you want to make it quick, just put it, make a piece of toast. And then when it comes out, you know, instead of just leaving it like this, you could use maybe like a cutter and make fancy little, you know, circles out of it. Or you could just take your knife, once this is toasted, and cut off the crusts and make you know, triangles out of it. So just go straight across, you know, that's kind of big. Usually, you know, hors d'oeuvre should be one bite. So then I would go again. And look, now you have these little triangles that are already toasted. Or use them like this, put a little butter or olive oil on them and toast them in your oven. Sometimes I'll put a little Parmesan cheese on top of that and then kind of brown it under the broiler. And then you have your base. And basically that's what a canapé is, some type of base, whether it's bread or a cracker. And then you're going to put a spread on it. So you could certainly use that or French bread, which is what I'm going to use. Just get a loaf baguette and slice it kind of thin and just put it onto a tray. And then I just put a little butter on this and throw it in the oven. This is going to be the base for it. So I'm going to pop that in with the bacon right now and then we're going to go on to the mix. Okay, when I was putting those French bread crostinis in the oven, I noticed the bacon is ready. At least majority of it is. Doesn't that look great? So I'm going to get it off this pan and start letting it cool. So this one was a little bit more meatier. So, you know, it's a little bit less crunchier. But we're going to put it on here. And you can see these ones here are very dark and crunchy. Well, they will be. So what it is right now is it's hot. So as soon as it cools down, all that sugar is going to make it turn into candy. So we're going to get that off that pan. Oops. And we're just going to let that set over here and start cooling down. Okay, and I'll put this pan over here to cool. Okay, so now we got to make some kind of filling for our canopy. So an easy one to do is to get some cream cheese and then I whip it. Well, you could just buy whipped cream cheese. And that whipping one gives a little bit of air and makes it easier to spread. And then I just have some crumbled blue cheese. You could cut it off a block or even you could buy it today in the grocery store. Little crumbled blue cheese. And I'm just going to put those together, mix them up. And that's, that's going to be the filling for the top of our bread canopy. And then I'm going to top this for the decoration or the garnish on top, right, with the bacon, piece of that candied bacon and a piece of green apple. So I'll show you that. Let me just get this mixed. Okay, so that's nice and mixed. So we'll put that off to the side. And now I have about a half a cup of water here and I've got about a teaspoon of sugar. I'm gonna put that in the water and then I'm gonna put some lemon juice. I put in the recipe about a tablespoon. 
So I got fresh lemon, you can use jarred lemon juice, whatever you'd like. And this is because if an apple, as you know, turns brown, it oxidizes when it hits the air. So this acid will prevent that from happening, and the sugar in there is going to add a little bit more sweetness to that. So we'll give that a little stir. Just let that sugar dissolve here while we cut our apple. So as we cut the apple, we're going to put it into this lemon water, or acidified water, to stop the browning. So I have a green apple that I've already washed, and now we're going to cut this into, you know, like slices that we can stick into our cream cheese spread as a decorative piece. So I'm going to quarter this apple, okay, and then I want to take out these seeds and cores. Now you could use a core, but here's a quick way. Just quarter it, and then take your knife on an angle, and cut out that core. So you have this nice little piece here. Okay, we'll do that with all of them. All right, and now we're going to make our slices. So remember that bread was kind of small, so, you know, we could do our slices this way, which may be a little long. We can always cut those in half if we want to, you know, but or I can go this way with it. Okay, so I've got all these... You know, slices this size. And just put those in the water. And those should be good. Okay, you want to keep it thin, because this, you know, it's supposed to be kind of delicate here. It's an hors d'oeuvre. So again, we'll do this one. All right, we got a lot here. Probably only need a half an apple. I'll put one in the recipe. Yeah, we'll give them two slices per piece. That'll be good. But if you don't have a green apple, use a red apple. It's just that the, the bacon is going to be pretty sweet. So, you know, I didn't want to use something, a sweet apple, red apple. So this green, you know, obviously, you know, if you've had Granny Smith apples before, they're kind of tart. And I think that'll be a good complement with the saltiness of the blue cheese, the fattiness of the cream cheese, the crunch of the bread, and then the bacon in there. So now we'll just set that off to the side, and let's check our crostinis. All right, they are perfect. See, don't take very long. What is that, five minutes? So you don't want to make them into a cracker, so they're hard. You still want you know, a little bit of bread, a little softness in the middle, a little bit of that. But you do want them a little bit toasted, so you can see these are nice and golden. And they'll be perfect. So let's, let's make one. But let me show you a trick. So you could take your crostini, right, and just take a dollop of this, you know, and spread it on there, you know, which would be fine. But it's a little harder to work with. Okay, and then we're going to put a piece of apple in here, you know, another piece of apple. And then we're going to, then we're going to put a piece of our bacon in there. So I'll grab a little piece here. It's already, you can see it's already gotten hard. And we'll make it kind of like in a shape, like a sail. And there we go. You can see that. But if you want to get a little fancy, you could use a pastry bag. You know, if you don't have one, they sell disposable ones too. I'm going to use a star tip. But you can use a solid tip, any type you want. And I think that'll make it a little bit more decorative. And then, folding it back so we don't get it on the outside, we can just take this filling and put it inside our pastry bag. Okay. There we go. And then, shake it down. There we go. Fold this back up. Okay, tighten that up so it squishes it down. Perfect. And then we're going to just give it a twist. Now we can use this decorative star to put right on there. A nice little decorative piece of the spread, some of the spread. And this will also hold when you make your mix. You can just leave this right into your refrigerator, right? 
and it'll hold. It's already, you know, enclosed. You don't put plastic wrap around it. And then when you're ready to make them, you have these already made up or crackers. Put them on your tray. Do a bunch of these. You know, you can go pretty quick with it. Then you can go and make them all up. So that's a handy little tip. Okay, so let's grab some apple here. Put it this way and this way. And this way and a nice one here. And now I'm going to put a big piece of bacon on this one. Yeah, there we go. And then we're going to put a little one on this one. Okay, so there you go. And you can put a little piece of parsley, a little chive coming out of it. You know, decorate it any way you want. But the flavor of this crunchiness of the base, you know, then we have the nice fatty, creamy saltiness of the blue cheese or gorgonzola spread. We have the tartness of the apple. I'm just going to add a little bit of freshness to it, too, because it has that lemon juice in there, you know, that acidity. And then we have the sugar and the um, maple syrup, saltiness, fattiness of the bacon. <laughs> be the hit of the party. All right, I got to try it. Mmm. Mmm. More bacon. Wonderful. All right, let's go on to dessert. Okay, we did this savory recipe for our candied bacon by making those little canapes, those little hors d'oeuvres, little appetizers. Now I want to do something sweet. S'mores. Who doesn't love s'mores? And now we're going to bring it to a new level. It's going to be candied bacon s'mores. You want to be the hit of your next barbecue, campfire, camp out. Try this. So we have a piece of the candied bacon, and I'm going to use that. Now, you could use traditional graham crackers and Hershey's chocolate bar with the marshmallows. That's perfectly okay. But since I'm doing candied bacon, I want to make it a little bit more special. Now, again, this is fine. You could even do it with regular bacon, and it would be an improvement. But let's do it. I'm going to use these Biscoffs. I don't know if you've ever heard of these, but these are wonderful if you haven't had them. They're kind of a cinnamon, kind of got some spices in it, but it's like a graham cracker. I think we used to get these on Delta Airlines, you know, little packages of those on the airplanes, and they were great. But now you can buy them in most grocery stores, so I like those. Again, it brings it to a different level. But instead of plain chocolate, I'm going to use Nutella, right? So this is really going to add to it. So we have our plate here of our cookie and bacon, and then I have a couple of marshmallows already skewered here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the cookies and place it here. And then I'm going to take some of this Nutella and spread it on there. Okay. Ooh, get it on there nice and thick. Okay. Great. And then I'm going to take a piece of this bacon. Break that off, this candy bacon. I'm going to put it in a couple of little pieces here. And I'm going to put that right down the cookie. So you can see that. So I'm doing this. Okay, and then we're going to have another cookie for the roof. That's going to go right on top. But now we've got to get our marshmallow in there. Now if you have a campfire, you're outside camping, sure. Put it right over there, get it nice and brown. <clears throat> but I'm going to use a torch. This is what we would use in the restaurant business to do creme brulees, things like that. We use torches. Sometimes we have mini torches they make now for kitchens. You can go to Williams Sonoma and pick one of those up if you'd like. Or just go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy one there. You know, pretty cheap. And you can just get different canisters for it. The small ones for the kitchen, you know, a little bit more handy to make. So I have it on my skewer. Now I'm just going to go ahead and just brown this. And it goes pretty quick. It even catches on fire, just like in a real camp campfire. Brown that up. Brown it up, get it nice and caramelized. Okay, again, all around if you can, get it gooey, kind of warm it up here a little bit. All right, so there we have our toasted marshmallow. Now I'm just going to place that on this cookie that doesn't have the chocolate. I can here. Oh, doesn't that look gooey and good? 
Okay, and then we're going to place it right on this bacon. Ooh. There we go. Push that down. Oh, now it's warming up that Nutella, the bacon. Now, I'm going to eat it. This is going to be messy, but that's what s'mores are all about. Mm. That was good. Again, you got this nice, salty, you know, sugary, candied bacon. It just goes so well with the marshmallow and the chocolate in there and that cookie. This is really good. You should try this next time you have a little party. Okay, so this has started to cool, so now it's solidified a little bit. So you can see kind of how it's stiffened up here. See, it's a little bit more stiff. Now, some people just serve it. They'll put it into like a cup, you know, with a vase type of looking container, and they'll just leave it like that or, you know, sticking off of it, maybe near the salad bar or something. Or you could cut it up. And I like to cut it into bite-sized pieces. And then I might put this on a plate with some toothpicks, you know, and then I just let the customers, you know, or the guests, you know, pick it up. You know, maybe put this in the middle around a platter of this bacon, and then people just pick it up with their toothpick. Mm. It was so good. And that thick bacon is really good for it, too. So... Lots of different recipes for this bacon. You can make it ahead of time, cool it down, steam it in the fridge a week. Or layer it between some parchment paper, freeze it, take out what you need. Use it as a quick hors d'oeuvre as is, like this. Or put it into a canapé, put it onto a little deviled egg, put it into, chop it up, put it into some muffins, make it into bacon bits and sprinkle it over a salad. I mean, it's endless. So give it a try. It's easy to do. And I think you're going to just wow your friends, your guests. So I hope you'll try this at home. That's it for this episode. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We'll be seeing more videos dropping in the near future. And then you'll be notified when they come out. Really appreciate you being a viewer, being a subscriber. And until next time, keep cooking. Bye-bye.